What's going on, everybody? Mike McFarland here, a late fort guide, fixing to give you a public rundown. June 2nd, 2022. June 2nd, 2022. Got a couple things I forgot to grab here that I want to show you. Show you that there. So, let's do the board. Um, well, we talked on Tuesday, uh, fished Wednesday. And did not fish today due to thunderstorms till about 10 a.m. Um, it was pretty heavy rains this morning, so we went ahead and canceled today. I don't have water temperatures for today, but yesterday the water's really starting to come back to that water that I want, that, that hotter 80, mid 80 degrees, 82 degrees was what we ended at, 76 what we started at. Um, but we're getting that hot water back. It drives those fish out of the shallows, back out offshore into the deeper water. Um, and we crushed them yesterday. I mean, we crushed them. Brooke had 35 pounds the evening before um, with a couple really, really big fish, one of them pushing double digits um, in the deep water, uh, out of the breaks, out on the creek swings, uh, the structure, mostly structure, deep structure. Um, but that really is the key. 80 degrees starts to be summer water, puts them in those summer fishing holes. Uh, water clarity, zero to one. As of today's rain, we only came up about a half an inch so far. Um, and I don't know that that really was enough rain to muddy anything or change any clarity. But basically sitting at 39739, I'm back on the rise, and uh, everything's kind of settled. The wind's laid down. Like I said, we had an awesome day yesterday. Um, I caught quite a few good ones in the morning with my clients. Um, my good client caught, Bruce caught two big fish. Um, and then later in the day, I went back out with Brooke after 3 o'clock and just mashed the big fish. Her and I alone, between 3 and 5 o'clock, had 32 pounds. Um, she had the two biggest fish. I had a couple sixes and she had some giant, giant, giant big bass. Um, one of them we thought was a double digit. Don't have an official scale on the boat uh, to confirm that at that time we didn't. It wasn't big enough fish to bring to the marina. It would measure, has to measure 24 inches in Lake Fork to be able to bring it to a marina. And in most cases, I don't even like to bring them in anyways, but this fish was only probably 23 inches. It was pushing the 10 pound mark. When it hit the net, I even went, dang, that's a heavy fish. Just thick, thick, thick body, full chested, Gorgeous fish. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, The Lake Fork Adventures Guide Service, or Mike McFarland, or Instagram, The Lake Fork Guide, um, you'll see those pictures of those two big ones that Brooke caught last night. Um, but man, just mashing the big fish this year. The lake is lining up right up my alley. It has been since March, um, and it really clicked. The low lake conditions are what I'm used to. Um, I came from desert lakes, Arizona lakes, California lakes that are always on the rise, always on the fall. I did a lot of fishing in, in Mexico. I've been to Lake Bacharach almost 12 times. I've been to El Salto uh, uh, half a dozen times. So over 20, 30 trips down there into those lakes, uh, uh, Huitas, Las Mochas, and, and hundreds of times we would drive to, over the years as a kid, we would drive to Abracan, Obiachi. Um, so I'm really familiar with lakes that rise and fall, um, and that low water just sets up perfect for me. I understand what the fish do. I understand how they use it. Fortunately, for McFarland Fishing, we've been beating on the big fish since March. Now, when it was cold, January, February, we weren't catching anything. I'm really struggling. These Florida strain don't like that cold water. I don't like that cold water. I don't like the cold weather. Um, as hard as I tried in, in February, I wasn't catching those fish until that water got up above 55, 60 degree mark. Um, but again, not to be redundant, really falling right in my lap um, this year, and, and I'm really grateful. I, can, I believe it will continue. Well, low lake is just going to be awesome. There's going to be a lot of fish that are still shallow, a lot of fish that are still on stumps in the backwaters, um, anywhere from 2 to 10 feet of water, and they will leave those backwaters when it gets too hot. There is no grass. There is no vegetation. There are no lily pads. There's no shade of the docks. So if you think about it, all those fish that would stay on those docks all year long, a lot of residential fish, they got nowhere to go. So they're going to come out offshore. They're going to get in the brush piles. They're going to get in the deeper water. There's going to be more fish offshore this year than we've had in the past years. And June and July will be spectacular because of it. So keeping that in mind, again, if you follow me, you see the results. If you don't follow me, go take a look. Go take a look at my Facebook and look how many days worth over the past eight, nine, ten weeks of big fish we have had. Um, with that, I want to invite you. I have some openings. I have a handful of openings in June. And July at this time is pretty open. There is plenty of time to get booked with me to go learn what am I doing? How am I finding these fish? And we graphed for almost two hours yesterday. Um, 
finished up my full, full, uh, tri full day trip, kind of got to cut early, clients wanted to go home early, and I went out and graphed for over two hours before I found a group of big fish. Um, if you want to know what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, two things. Book a trip with me. Um, it's worth it. I promise you I take good care of you. I don't fish when I'm on a guide trip. It's all about you fishing, you catching those fish. Um, I believe if you go deer hunting, the deer hunting guide never shoots the deer, and a bass fishing guide should never be catching the fish. Um, so I'm open in June. Love to show you how to use your sonar, set your sonar, uh, and teach you the techniques that I'm using for, for deep water structure and how to find and catch these big fish on Lake Four regularly, not just once in a blue moon, okay? Um, keep that in mind. Some dates are June 14th is open, June 16th is open, June 18th is open, and then the last of the month, there's a few more days open as well. Um, let's tell you about the weather. Again, we had some pretty good thunderstorms come in yesterday afternoon. Um, it was real funny. Brooke and I were fishing and we heard the kaboom and Brooke said, what do we do? And I said, I don't know, man. I, it's not a real big storm coming in. She said, well, that breaks your rules. You're staying out here. We hear a kaboom, you get off the lake. I said, yeah, we usually do. And Right about that time, she felt her rod buzz, and she threw that rod down on the deck and said, oh my gosh, I just felt the rod buzz. It's time to go. And so I let her drive the boat, man, and she spun that sucker out of the hole we were at and ran for a bridge, got underneath the bridge until it passed. Um, but the storms last night didn't dump much rain. The storms in the evening yesterday, the storms that came through the night and hit this morning sounded like they dumped some rain. Um, but we're looking at uh, tom you know, uh, tomorrow, Friday, being Friday, 69 degrees, 86 for a high, southeast winds return, 5 to 10 miles an hour. Remember, when the wind blows from the south, it blows it in their mouth. They bite well on Lake Fork when the wind's coming from the south. So I expect tomorrow to be good. I expect Saturday to be good. More southeast winds, a little higher, 10 to 15 mile an hour. And generally, when the weatherman says that, you can double what he says. So if he's saying 10 to 15, it might be a little rough on Saturday. But the weather's great, 72 for low, 92 for a high. Remember to start early. When you're starting at the crack of dawn, start shallow. Um, go ahead and fish the top waters, underspins, a little bit of small crankbaits, things like that. But man, I, I skipped that the other day. I did start shallow, but I started right with the jigs and the big worms, caught the fish right away. Um, so start shallow early, then work yourself out to the 8 to 22 foot after 9 a.m. and stay with it. Once that sun's up high, don't be afraid to get in that 20, 20 plus foot of water because the bass are out there, I promise you. Um, Couple good things happening. You no, know, the bite is good. So, you have the Skeeter event coming next week. They set up the tent there at Lake Fort Marina. And if you've never seen the vendors, um, come around Thursday, Friday for the vendors. There's a lot of vendors for the Skeeter event. You can get some really good deals. You can see some new stuff, some cool stuff. Um, they give some freebies. Some some of the vendors do. Some of them don't. Um, but come on out Thursday, Friday for pre-registration and sign-ups and and see the vendors. Um, it's only $120 for two days to fish a Skeeter event per person. That's nothing to have a chance at winning a boat. Um, there are some free prizes and some free things that Skeeter gives you that's almost already worth that $120 fee. Um, so I recommend that you come on out and check it out, okay? Um, if you are fishing that event, it usually takes an over to win the boat, um, but they do have some hourly prizes and hourly money for unders as well. And um, I'm not going to give you the goods on how to catch these big fish, I'm going to invite you to come to my members only channel. We're going to do that in just a second. But I am going to give you some goods on how to catch some fish and how to catch the really good unders on Lake Fork right now. And if you're fishing the Skeeter event or just fishing any good old tournament, it's a great way to catch them. Okay. The first thing is, is it's the bait. And it's just a Strike King Rage Tail Cutter one. Multitude of colors you can run. I just like the watermelon red and the red bug. Those are the only two colors I throw. But I take a lightweight wobble head. Santone makes a perfect little wobble head for it. You want like an eighth ounce or quarter ounce wobble head because this is weedless now and the cutter worm has a tail on it. It's kind of like a Senko with a tail. Um, so I can do two things. I can fish it just like I would fish a worm. It's weedless so it falls in and out of those brush piles really well but I can swim it too. Um, and I catch a lot of fish swimming it back to the boat. So I throw to the brush pile, I fish it through the brush pile. Once it's through the brush pile, I swim it the rest of the way home. And a lot of them fall out of that brush pile and hit it before it gets to the boat. Um, so right now, that's really the way to go. Little wobble head, Strike King Cutter Worm, Red Bug, or Watermelon Red. Watermelons, they want to say candy, but I just don't think they make a candy, at least I'm not aware of it, but a Watermelon Red, Watermelon Seed Red, and Red Bug, okay? The invite. 
man, I said it in the last one. The the members only has really climbed up there. There are a lot, a lot of members, a lot more than you may expect. I'm talking six figure a lot, um, and they all seem to be very, very happy. The comments that I get, the the responses that I get, the likes, um, the super thanks that they give me, and that super thanks button is a little more than just liking the button. It, it's a chance to to thank me back for what I actually give, and I give the goods. I literally give the goods. I tell the exact truth. I tell the spots, the baits, how we caught the fish right here in McFarland Fishing. And so I'm inviting you again to please subscribe to Members Only Channel. It's really easy. From your desktop or your laptop, any one of these public videos, there should be a join button. Just hit the join button, follow the procedures. Um, it's $4.99 a month. You lose more lures in a day fishing. These days, that's one gallon of gas. Okay, so give me a try. I'm asking you, please, give it an opportunity. If you don't like it, unsubscribe, and it costs you one month's worth, $4.99. Give me a month. Give me four, actually, you have four, at least four good rundowns to decide whether it's worth that $4.99. If you fish for it frequently, you fish there a lot, it's worth it, okay? I give you the rule three, which is the locations and the exact dates, and that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to do a member's rundown right after this and tell them exactly how Brooke and I Caught those big fish last night. So two days in a row, Brooke has 30 pound plus set, 35 pounds the day before, and 32 pounds yesterday. And I'm going to tell you how we do it. So thank you guys. I appreciate you watching. Listen, if you did enjoy the public, if you're still having good value out of this public, I'm super grateful for that subscription as well. Um, you don't have to do any more for me to be grateful for you. Um, so hit the like button, comment below, um, and again. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following the Lake Fork Guide to McFarland Fishing. I'm Mike McFarland, giving you a rundown.